Hey YouTube, today I thought we could go over the means of grace, word and sacrament. How does God deliver faith to a man? Well, as Lutherans, we look at God's word and the sacraments. So let's go over the preached word first. Let's look at Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. How does faith come? By hearing, hearing the word of God. John 6, 63. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is of no profit at all. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. So when Jesus is speaking, his words are actual spirit and life. All of these words, they create and sustain faith in us. Hebrews 4, 12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. It pierces even to divide soul and spirit, joints and marrow, it is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Notice the two-edged sword. Thoughts and intentions of the heart, sharper than a two-edged sword. It's kind of a law gospel text. Two-edged sword, law gospel, keep that in the back of your mind. But again, the word of God is what? Living and active. So. We understand now from looking at a few texts that the Word of God actually does something in us. The Holy Spirit uses the Word of God to enter us, convict us, and convert us. What about baptism? 1 Peter 3.21 Baptism, which corresponds to this, this being the ark, what did the ark do? It saved eight souls in all from God's wrath, now saves you. Not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So Peter is telling us it's not a bath. <laughs> okay, baptism is not to wash the dirt off. What is funny? It saves you. How? As an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. But you were washed, you were justified, and you were sanctified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Notice, washed in the name of Jesus Christ, which would be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Authoritative command when he says Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Titus 3, 5. He saved us, not by works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal with the Holy Spirit. So again, we see washing with regeneration and receiving the Holy Spirit. John 3, 5, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So what do we see here? Again, water and spirit, baptism text. Notice what happens in baptism. It always involves the Holy Spirit, just like we just talked about the word, the Holy Spirit. So we can look at faith, the forgiveness of sins, and the promise of the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? We'll get to that in another video. But the Holy Spirit's main work is to testify to Christ, John 16. Now, let's talk about the sacrament of the altar. Hallelujah. Sacrament of the altar, the Holy Supper, is another sacrament, but children don't partake in this sacrament because this is the only sacrament that comes with a warning. To my Calvinist and evangelical friends, how can a symbol, as they call it, which it's not, come with a warning. Yeah, symbols don't come with a warning. Let's look at some text. Matthew 26, 26. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup when he had given thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink of it all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Notice what Jesus plainly says here though. Take and eat, this is my body, do this in remembrance of me. Take and drink, this is the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. It depends upon what the meaning of the word is. Not a symbol. Totally says, this is my body. This is my blood. This is what it does. It's the new covenant. Anyways, moving along. Let's look at another text. John 6, 48. I am the bread of life. Your fathers all ate the manna in the wilderness, and they all died. This is the bread come down from heaven, so that you may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jumping to verse 53. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats has eternal life. All of the texts I've just given you and the ones coming forward, go back and look at them in context. Take this video, pause it as the texts are mentioned, and look at each text in context to make sure that I'm not deceiving you but giving you true biblical information. Okay, moving on with the sacrament of the altar. 1 Corinthians 11, 23. This is where Paul confirms what we just heard Jesus testify to in Matthew 26, 26. And remember, Paul received the gospel from no man, but he was taught by Christ himself through a revelation by Christ himself. Paul says in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Paul goes on, to talk about the wrath that we just talked about, if you check 1 Corinthians 11, that you will put yourself under if you do not eat and drink in a worthy manner. And that means being penitent and believing in the true presence of Christ in the sacrament. Look at all the things we just talked about. We talked about the preach word, baptism, and the Holy Supper, all doing something with faith. Notice that faith, spirit, and forgiveness are all mentioned in these. It's important to note that Jesus himself is the sacraments. When John baptized Jesus, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance, but he baptized Jesus on our behalf. Jesus didn't need to repent. He was baptized for us. Why? To cleanse the water, so to speak. So when the water hits you with the word of God, then it's completely valid because Christ covers you. Paul tells us in Colossians, all those who have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Sweet. Sweet. That's why Jesus was baptized. When we look at something like Acts 28, we see Peter saying, repent, all of you, and be baptized, and you will receive the forgiveness of sins and the promise of the Holy Spirit. Notice again, another baptism text, and these were people who were preached the gospel first, so the word convicted them, and then they were baptized. Jesus says in Matthew 28, Therefore, go into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. People will always try to deny these sacraments and say, No, 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 salvation is by Jesus alone. I don't need it. I don't need it. Definitely don't need it. But what they're missing is the sacraments are Jesus. The preached word is Jesus. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Baptism is Jesus. The supper is literally Jesus. God uses these means to save men. We can look at old stuff in the Old Testament like the bread of presence and the holies of holies for type and shadow or the Israelites were baptized into Moses crossing the Red Sea, manna raining from heaven, it never stops. God was pointing forward to the new covenant, the new and better covenant, as the author of Hebrews tells us. This is how the means of grace work. I'd like to stand here for an hour and lecture, but we gotta keep these short. There's the text, open your Bible, and pause the video and look at the verses in context that we just talked about. And understand that God uses these means synergistically. 
God alone saves. Okay, Ephesians 2.8 makes this very clear. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of you, is a gift of God, so no one may boast. God alone saves. He's monergistic. But the means of grace work synergistically to save a man, and they are all grace. Baptism is not a law. It's gospel. The Holy Supper is not a, a memorial meal. It's gospel. It's shed for the forgiveness of sins, the blood of the new covenant. One more text before you go. Let's talk about 1 John 5, 7. For there are three that testify, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. That's so cool. The spirit, the water, and the blood, and they all agree. 1 John 5, 7. So notice that John is always playing on the sacraments. When Jesus was pierced, what came out of his side? Blood and water. Not only is this like a, a scientific thing, it's a biblical thing, okay? The water points to baptism, the blood points to the sacrament of the altar, coming from the Word himself. But the evangelical or the Calvinist will say, thief on the cross, ha! Gotcha! Hardly. We confess that the sacraments and the Word can save apart from one another, but it's not beneficial to do apart from one another since Jesus clearly commanded in Matthew 28, do this for your benefit, for your grace. It's like saying, drink water or you'll die. I need it! Okay, so we want to stay connected to Christ. He is the vine, we are the branches. He says, abide in me and I in you, for apart from me you can do nothing. Why would we want to ignore that? We don't. The thief had the very same promise we do. Truly, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. And that's what Jesus says to us in our baptism, through the preached word, and through the Holy Supper. Hope you find this video edifying. Please like and subscribe if you like what we're doing here. And please keep check, keep check, keep check, keep check, 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 check. Checking us out and putting up with us. Till next time, grace, yo.